holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. O Lord, I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. I will sing to the Lord, for he has dealt with me richly. How long, O Lord, how long will you forget me forever? How long will you hide your face from me? Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. O Lord, I put my trust in your mercy. My heart is joyful because of your saving help. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, your never-failing providence sets in order all things both in heaven and earth. Put away from us, we entreat you, all hurtful things, and give us those things which are profitable for us. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Please be seated. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the church at Corinth. We do not proclaim ourselves. We proclaim Jesus Christ as Lord and ourselves as your slaves for Jesus' sake. For it is the God who said, Let light shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. For we have this treasure in clay jars, so that, so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus, so, so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. So death is at work at us, but life in you. The word of the Lord. I said, Lord, be merciful to me. Heal me, for I have sinned against you. Happy are they who consider the poor and needy. The Lord will deliver them in the time of trouble. Alleluia, alleluia. Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Alleluia. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Mark. One Sabbath, Jesus and his disciples were going through the grain fields, and as they made their way, his disciples began to pluck heads of grain. The Pharisees said to him, Look, why are they doing what is not lawful on the Sabbath? And he said to them, Have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need of food? He entered the house of God when Abiatar was high priest and ate the bread of the presence, which it is not lawful for any but the priest to eat, and he gave some to his companions. Then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for humankind and not humankind for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Again he entered the synagogue, and a man was there who had a withered hand. They watched him to see whether he would cure him on the Sabbath so that they might accuse him. And he said to the man who had the withered hand, Come forth. Then he said to them, Is it lawful to do good or to do harm on the Sabbath, to save life or to kill? But they were silent. He looked around at them with anger. He was grieved at their hardness of heart and said to them, said to the man, Stretch out your hand. He stretched it out, and his hand was restored. The Pharisees went out and immediately conspired with the Herodians against him how to destroy him. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. A recent survey found that 62% of American workers fear being thought of as lazy. 44% reported having had significant anxiety in the last week because of, your, of their job. Uh, I am guilty of this. I can say that it's a source of some sort of perverse pride that in 14 years of ordained ministry, in each of which I was supposed to have taken off four weeks and five Sundays, I have never used all of that time in any year of those 14. It is routinely the case that managers, at least the wise ones, 
are forced to prod their employees to use their time before it vanishes. Many uh, uh, businesses and places of work don't allow you to roll your time over from one year to the next. You've got to take it. Or you're only allowed to build up a certain amount before you begin to lose whatever is left. So clearly, at least we as Americans, perhaps it's not true for other countries. We can hope other people are smarter than we are. Americans have a hard time with the idea of Sabbath, with the idea of rest. Hustle culture, I'm sure you've heard this term, is very popular among younger people these days. The idea that you must work hard, you must sacrifice your well-being, you must do whatever is necessary to be successful, and if you don't, well, that's just your own fault. <laughs> it, it's, it's a very judgmental way of thinking, thinking about the world and thinking about how people behave. Something similar is going on in the gospel lesson this morning, at least the judgmental part. The Pharisees think they know what the Sabbath is about. It's about following certain rules, things you may do and certain things you may not do. You may know, I may have told you before, that this has come down right to the present day. Observant Jews are still very concerned with exactly what the Sabbath is, rightly so. And so there are rabbis who still issue opinions in the modern day about what is and is not permitted on the Sabbath. Uh, one that I remember recently reading about was, was is it possible to make a microwave oven kosher? Because normally you pour boiling water all over something to make it kosher. I don't recommend pouring boiling water all over your microwave. So the question becomes, well, how do you make it work? Well, these are important questions if this is how you understand the Sabbath. What Jesus is trying to point out to his listeners there and I would suggest to us as well, is it's important to have a proper understanding of what the Sabbath is actually for. Yes, the rules may be important. Maybe we need the rules. Uh, plainly, I need the rules. If I have never used all the time off I'm supposed to have, I need somebody who's kicking me once in a while to say, have you taken all your time off? But nonetheless, the rules are still only an envelope. The rules are still only a way of making sure that we're paying attention to what it actually is supposed to do for us. The rest that we are supposed to take. Just this last Sunday, you'll recall, Connie Cooper at 1030 read the first lesson, which was Genesis 1. On the seventh day, God rested. <laughs> God did that. God passed that down to us as an appropriate part of work as an appropriate part of our life, a necessary part of our life. And if we do not do as God did, how much are we honoring God in the process? I wonder sometimes, every time I look at my phone when I'm supposed to be resting, every time I answer an email when I'm not supposed to be doing it, how much I'm really honoring God in that moment and what signal I'm sending about myself and what I understand God to be up to. So, dear friends, a useful lesson to hear, I think, now just at the beginning of the summer season. Now at a time when, once upon a time, we actually did rest. At least some of us did, the ones who were able to. Perhaps we're being reminded of that need to rest. That the Sabbath is about calling God to mind and God's example there are times when work must be set aside. Make as many rules as you want. Make whatever you want to do. You can have as elaborate a system to help you do that as you need. And clearly the people in the story today had an elaborate system for that. I won't deny I need a fairly elaborate system too sometimes, and so I won't get rid of it entirely. But I hope that you and I in those moments of rest will call to mind God's rest. And that, in fact, by doing what we do in those moments, we are showing gratitude to God for what it is that has been given to us. So, dear friends, let us not be anxious. I'm saying that a lot lately to a lot of people because there's an awful lot of anxiety out there. Let us rest. Let us be calm. Let us trust in the goodness of God, even in the moments where we're not trying to score one more point. God loves us anyway. Amen.
And now let us pray. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. For the peace from above, for the salvation of humankind, that righteousness, mercy, and truth may prevail among all nations and peoples. For the well-being of your holy Catholic Church in every place, that you will confirm it in the truth of your holy word and grant that all Christians may live in unity, love, and mutual respect. Hear us, Lord. For bishops and other ministers, especially for Michael, our presiding bishop, Kevin, our bishop, and those who serve you in this place, that both by their life and teaching they may proclaim your true and life-giving word, and faithfully administer your holy sacraments. Hear us, Lord. For all who bear authority in this and every land, and especially for the leaders of this nation, that in a holy awareness of you, they may govern the peoples in wisdom, justice, and peace. Hear us, <clears throat> for all who spread the gospel among the nations, and who minister to the suffering, the friendless, and the needy, that they may have strength and courage to fulfill your holy will. For all who labor in commerce and industry, especially those whose work is dangerous or burdensome, for all who are engaged in the arts and sciences and those who teach and study in schools of good learning, for all who care for children and those unable to care for themselves, that they may be, aware, that they may be worthy of their calling to serve you and their neighbors. Yes, for those who farm the fields and tend the woods, for all who gather the harvest of the lands and of the waters, and for our faithful use of your creative bounty, that humankind being delivered from famine and disaster may acknowledge your glory in all your works. Yes, for all who serve our country at home and abroad, that they may have an awareness of your presence and the protection of your holy angels. We remember especially Adam, Annie, Ben, Bob, Bradley, Brett, Brian, Charlie, Christy, James, Jeremy, Joe, Josh, Kagan, Kate, Kathy, Kevin, Luke, Marvin, Matthew, Nate, Nicholas, Stacy, Stuart, Tina, Tyler, and Victoria. For all who in this brief and changeable life are in danger, trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity, that they may have comfort and relief of all their needs. We remember especially the Archer family, Austin and Chrissy, Barry, Bernice, Betty, the Blackman family, Bob, Brendan, Brighton, the Carew family, Carol, Carolyn, Cecily, Charles, Charlie and Ellen, Sean, Chris, Christine, Christine and Eric, Christine and Francis, Chuck and Paula, Connie, Court, Dee, Daphne, Denise, Dennis, Devon, the Ely family, Elmer, Aaron and family, Flora, Frank, Fred and Lori, Jeff, George, Giorgio and family, the Harrison family, Jean, Jean and Richard, Jim, John, Johnny, Judy, June, Catherine, Kelly, the Lane family, Larry, Liz, Lorraine, Lynn, Mark, Marge, Maria, Marion and family, Mary Ann, Mary, Mary Ellen, Michael, Morgan and family, the Mullins family, Nancy, Nicholas, Noah, Pam, Pat and Emmett, Paula, Rick, Ricky, Shannon, Sharon, Sandra, Sophie, the South family, Stephen, Stover, Susan and family, Tom and Vicki. Are there others?
for all your people, and especially those who worship in this place, that with faith, reverence, and obedience, they may serve you with a glad mind and ready will all the days of their lives. Have mercy on us, most, for, most, most merciful Lord, and forgive us and deliver us from all affliction, strife, and catastrophe. In your compassion, forgive us all our sins and failures, known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so support us with your spirit that we may end our days in peace, trusting in your mercy at the day of judgment. We commend to your keeping all your servants departed this life in your faith and fear, praying that you will grant them mercy, light, and peace. May we with all your saints have a part in your everlasting kingdom through the mercies and merits of your Son, Jesus Christ, our only mediator and advocate. To you be honor, glory, and dominion now and forever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Please be seated. Can you tell I'm getting new glasses next week? <laughs> How much further can I hold it away from me? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God. Blessed are you, O Lord God, ruler of the universe, that we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, O Lord God, ruler of the universe, that we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed be God forever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right that we should praise you, gracious God, for you created all things. You formed us in your image. Male and female, you created us. When we turned away from you in sin, you did not cease to care for us, but opened a path of salvation for all people. You made a covenant with Israel, and through your servants Abraham and Sarah gave the promise of a blessing to all nations. Through Moses, you led your people from bondage into freedom. Through the prophets, you renewed your promise of salvation. Therefore, with them and with all your saints who have served you in every age, we give thanks and raise our voices to proclaim the glory of your name. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. 
Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Holy God, source of life and goodness, all creation rightly gives you praise. In the fullness of time, you sent your Son, Jesus Christ, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He healed the sick and ate and drank with outcasts and sinners. He opened the eyes of the blind and proclaimed the good news of your kingdom to the poor and to those in need. In all things, he fulfilled your gracious will. On the night he freely gave himself to death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Gracious God, his perfect sacrifice destroys the power of sin and death. By raising him to life, you give us life forevermore. Therefore, we proclaim our hope. Dying, you destroyed our death. Rising, you restored our life. Lord Jesus, come in glory. Recalling his death, proclaiming his resurrection, and looking for his coming again in glory, we offer you, Father, this bread and this cup. Send your Holy Spirit upon us and upon these gifts, that all who eat and drink at this table may be one body and one holy people, a li living sacrifice in Jesus Christ our Lord. Through Christ and with Christ and in Christ, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Happy are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb.
Let us pray. Eternal God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and you have fed us with spiritual food in the sacrament of his body and blood. Send us now into the world in peace and grant us strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. Just before I give the blessing, I will make the announcement there will be no Wednesday service next week. I'll be away at the clergy conference, and Father Clay still has things he has to do for his day job as those sort of settling out what days he's going to work. It turns out he has to be in a mandatory training thing next Wednesday during the day. So unfortunately, we will not be able to do next Wednesday. But with luck, that will be a very rare occurrence from here on. With that said, the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.